are watching Sammy, the Interviewing Toucan, made possible by the Indiana Young Reader Center. Hey, everybody. I'm Sammy, and I'm so excited today to be here with Kimberly Brewbreaker Bradley. Hi, Kim. How are you? Hi, Sammy. I'm great. Thanks for having me over. Oh, my gosh. Well, I am so excited to be talking to you today. You are an amazing author. You have, what is it, like 18 books out? 18, yes. Ah, that's so great. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself and your connection to Indiana? I was born in Indiana, in Fort Wayne, and I grew up there and lived there until I went away to college. I went to school in Massachusetts, and then I came back and got married and lived in Indianapolis for the next eight years. Uh, and that's where my husband and I had our son, and uh, he finished his training at Indiana Medical School. Uh, my parents still live in Fort Wayne, my brother and his family live in Fort Wayne. So we're still up back in Indiana pretty often. So let's talk a little bit about your work. I have one of your books here. This is The War That Saved My Life, but your most recent book is called Fighting Words. Do you have it there? I do. This is oh. what the cover looks like. Now I should tell you, you see the silver sticker on The War That Saved My Life. That's the new great honor. Fighting I know words. all about that silver sticker and I know yeah. you got it for Fighting Words too. Ah! Yeah, so it, it'll go right here. They're going to send me some, some stickers of my own, but... <laughs> Um, but I don't have one on that one yet. So. Gosh, let's talk about that. What was it like when they, call, did, did they call you? Was it? Yeah, they, they called the authors first. It was actually, it was pretty funny. For the War That Saved My Life, they called me on Monday morning. The, the award is given out on Monday at the American Library Association conference, and they announce it at a big sort of media event, and people go and get tickets, and all these different awards are announced. So they called, they called the morning of that, but really early in the morning for the war that saved my life, the committee calls the authors. This year, because they didn't have an actual meeting and everything was done virtually, they called on Sunday night. So I was not expecting it. And the funny thing is, is that they had tried to call some of the other winners. There are, there's always one, one medalist and then however many honor books they want. And there were five this year. And one of the, one person's phone kept going to scam, spam folders and they couldn't answer their phone because it uh, kept going to spam. And so they called me and the very first thing they said, this is not spam. This is the American <laughs> Library Association. And I thought, what? Because, you know, I actually thought it was spam since I wasn't expecting a phone call on uh, Sunday night, no matter what happened. It was pretty exciting. It was a really, really neat thing. Oh, great. Well, do you want to tell us a little bit about either Fighting Words or The War That Saved My Life? Which one should we talk about? Yeah, let's talk about Fighting Words. Fighting Words is the story of two sisters, Della and her older sister, Suki. Della is 10 uh, when the book starts, and she and Suki have just been moved into foster care. And their reasons are, their, their lives have been pretty difficult. At first, the reader doesn't really know why. And, and it's the first couple of months that they're out of a hard situation and learning to kind of cope with the aftermath of what happened to both of them. I really love this book partially because it's funny. It, it covers a lot of very, very serious topics, uh, but Della's voice, which just sort of came out of nowhere when I started writing it, makes me laugh. You know, she's she's a kid that, that has to learn how to stand up for herself in ways that are helpful rather than harmful, but she's always tough as nails and, and she's very honest and she's a very good friend and she's just funny. She has a, a funny sort of a, a viewpoint on everything. And she cusses a lot. Um, and because as a writer, you're not allowed to use bad words in a book aimed for 10 year olds, Della replaces them as she's telling the story. She replaces all her cuss words with the word snow. Oh. Like, I don't take snow from anybody. <laughs> and, you know, that works. It works really well. So. Oh, I love that. You know, I think it really requires some really big writing chops to be able to tell a serious story and have that humorous voice. You know. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I think this is the book that I was sort of leading up to most of my life. I mean, I, it took me a long time to be a good enough writer to write this book. But when I did write it, I mean, it, it still takes me a long time. I go through a lot of drafts and I, I had seven and a half drafts for this book. So that's a lot by, by anyone's standards. But the voice came out of out of nowhere. And I don't think that would have happened if I hadn't already written The War That Saved My Life and its, and its sequel to War I Finally Won. Can I read the very, very beginning? Yes, please. Okay. My new tattoo is covered by a Band-Aid, but halfway through recess, the Band-Aid falls off. I'm hanging my winter coat on the hook in our fourth grade classroom when my teacher, Ms. Devante, walks by and gasps. Della, she says, is that a tattoo? I hold up my wrist to show it to her. 
It's an ampersand, I say, careful to pronounce the word correctly. I know that, Ms. Devante said. Is it real? It's so real it still hurts, and the skin around it is red and puffy. Yes, ma'am, I say. She shakes her head and mutters. I am not one of her favorite students. I may be one of her least favorites. I don't care. I love, love, love my ampersand tattoo. I am 10 years old. I'm going to tell you the whole story. Some parts are hard, so I'll leave those for later. We'll start with the easy stuff. What a great way to open. And I think probably a lot of our viewers will know that the ampersand actually represents something, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's important. Yeah. Yeah, and it'll come back at the end. Oh, and wonderful. It's important. Uh, well, Kim, I always ask my authors to share a little something. Do you have a little something there for show and tell? I do have a little something, and I, I, I cleverly kept it from you. I don't know if you heard, uh, Beverly Cleary died. Beverly Cleary was a children's book author. Um, that was writing her best works when I was a child. Uh, well, I mean, some of them were in the 50s, but but when I was born, she was she was at the peak of her writing career. She won the Newbery Award for a book called Dear Mr. Henshaw. I just went and looked at my shelves and, and the only Beverly Cleary I could find is this one. It's Sister of the Bride, which I can see I bought used, but I, I did love this book. This is one of her kind of more obscure books. And I was really, really sorry when she died. A lot of writers were, especially ones that are my age, because she sort of changed children's books. She wrote about real kids that weren't always lovable and sweet, um, and they weren't, you know, British orphans. They were, they were regular kids that you would meet at school, Ramona the Pest and Henry Huggins and uh, Ramona's sister Beezus. Um, she was 104 when she died, so it wasn't a tragedy. She, she, but we sort of felt like the world was a little less uh, full without Beverly Cleary in it. And so, I present to you Beverly Cleary Bradley. Oh, um, the Hi, Beverly Bradley. Cleary Bradley. Got a new puppy. Oh. A schnoodle. She's a second dog to be sister to our other uh, dog, Kava. But yes, this is Beverly Cleary Bradley. And I hope that she is every bit as rambunctious as her namesake. Well, and she's a very sweet, sweet puppy. <laughs> Look at her. Pretty well because she's worn out. She played hard all morning. And so she. The rest of this interview has just been curled up on my lap because oh. she was. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Oh, and Beverly Cleary is just, she's a, she's such a legend, you know? Yeah, she was. She changed children's literature for the better and, and is somebody we can all admire. Oh so. my gosh. Well, Kim, this has been so delightful. So glad to meet Beverly Cleary Bradley. Oh, well, hey, everybody. This is your favorite Hoosier Toucan encouraging you to be <sighs> local. <laughs> so long, everybody. Bye, Kim.